Okay, here we go. Time travel. This is Jim 150 years ago. Oh, wow. wow. This is so cool. Wow. This is awesome. That's history, technology, and art. Is that Robert E. Lee? <laughs> That's his more handsome younger brother. <laughs> My name is Rob Gibson. I'm from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, originally from Lockport, New York, but I'm a tintype photographer. So I actually do the same photographic process that was done in the 1860s all the way up to the uh, turn of the century. Okay, so what's going on behind you, Jim? This is a headrest. This was used behind everybody in a photograph, if they could. Didn't matter if you were a Civil War private or Abraham Lincoln. You got one of these. This is the most valuable thing I brought today. This worth about $6,000. They are unbelievably rare. A lot of them went to scrap iron when they didn't need them. Okay, head right back, right up against that. There you go. Right here. You see a little bit about what the camera is seeing. All right, we are about ready. Good tan right there. I have arm sleeves here that allow me to put my hands in here without any light sneaking in this. I'm going to show you my plate right now. Eric, you let me know if you can see this or not. Yep. What I'm doing is blotting it. There it is. See how white it is? It's light sensitive now. It's going to be 15 seconds. All I'm going to do is take this lens cap off the top. Okay? There's no flash, there's no pressing button. Now, while you're sitting there, it's okay to blink your eyes. It's so quick, my camera can't see it. And counting. That is it. You can move. It was strictly, uh, as you say, I, I did this as a hobby. It was something that I was attracted to, but I didn't know why. I mean, I remember as a young kid going to like an old Italian restaurant. I take off to the bathroom, and suddenly, you know, my parents look around. I'd be gone. I'd be looking at these old photographs on the walls, these old sepia tone or black and white prints, and I was like, just drawn into them, not knowing exactly, you know, what I was going to do with that information. But um, years later, when I found out you could actually recreate this process, I was was just drawn into it, if you will. These were people that were, for hundreds of years were making microscopes, telescopes, and eventually photographic lenses. This lens, when it was brand new in 1862, $540. You could buy a house in that town, in this town, for $540 in 1862. Incredibly expensive. Why? Because it was the latest cutting edge technology of the day, made by the finest lens makers in the world. When I met him and saw what he was doing, it seemed like a very unique process, and um, my students work an with analog for the most part. We do a lot of darkroom photography, so they're familiar with some of the chemicals and techniques for lighting, and um, I just thought it would be a really good experience for the kids and for the community. Really interesting. It was really cool to learn everything about the older, the older cameras. It was just different. I thought it was really cool to see a different type of style of photography that you don't usually see every day because now it is usually just digital. But I really liked the way he showed how much effort he actually puts into it, and I thought it was pretty cool to be able to make a scene from the past relive now. Basically, what I'm going to do is make film. All right. Now, this stuff is called collodion. It's a mixture of nitrocellulose and ether. All right, Nitrocellulose is explosive. Uh, in the old days, in the 1920s, they had something called celluloid film. All right, You ever hear it? Don't yell fire in a movie theater. Well, why do they say that? Well, a lot of movie theaters burnt down. It wasn't uncommon. It's because they had old celluloid film and sitting right next to the projector was a projectionist. 
whose job it was to make absolutely sure that stuff got threaded through there with that hot lamp. Because if it stalled and started skipping, all of a sudden, poof, the projection room was on fire. It's that explosive. Well, this is the same basis as that stuff. Okay, so what I'm doing is pulling some on there. Now the stuff is starting to evaporate as soon as I pour it. It's not that big a deal here today. 100 degree heat, I'm working as fast as I can. I'm throwing this stuff on there. It's boiling as quick as I can get it. So guess where I get ether from? The That's ether funny. <laughs> okay, there I have it on this little spatula thing. This skinny little tank contains about $100 worth of silver nitrate solution. I put it down in there in one smooth motion, I put the lid on. So what's happening now? It's sensitizing. The chemistry that's in there, besides the ether, the alcohol, and the nitrocellulose, I have what I call salts, iodides and bromides that I have dissolved into a liquid that I introduce into there. Those chemicals react with the silver nitrate. They create silver iodide, which is the basis of film. So step one, create the film. Step two, sensitize the film. All has to happen on location. I can't do this at home and go bring it to your house, take your picture. It's going to be dry by the time I get there. I thought it's just like interesting just to see him doing what he wants to do and then making other people happy because it's a cool technique that not everybody can do. So it's like some skills that he has that would be cool to like value someday, but that's a lot of work and effort. I think the connection with the people. I mean, it's great doing landscape photographs. Sometimes it's great to be off on your own and just you and a subject, whether it's a landscape or an old train or, you know, that kind of thing. But the other thing is being able to do what I do and, and create something that's out of the past and people's reactions to it. I think that magic of seeing that image being developed and fixed before their eyes and literally transporting them to another time period is... The, to me, the big connection with this is, you know, something that I absolutely love and I never get tired of.